They did, but it was offside. Oh, security just told him to get down. Oh, that's not security. Never mind. I was about to say, if we got sad to Bo when a goal got scored, that would be all time. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? It is Uncle Matt here with the Soda Pop. We are at Geodis Park for Nashville SC's match against defending MLS Cup champions LAFC. Might be a rough one for the boys in gold today, but it's going to be a fun experience nonetheless. We're here pretty early today because they're doing a giveaway of a Walker Zimmerman bobblehead for the first uh, 10,000 fans. So we got here a little bit early, popped into the backline tailgate, saw the, what was going on there. We're just going to head over to the opening acts area where they've got some bands and some other little pop-up vendors and stuff going on. We haven't really ever checked that out at a game day, so a lot going on today. Hopefully the match is good. We'll see. Stretch. Gotta get loose. Do the stretches. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is my workout for the day. And I just pulled my quad. All right, so we're over by the supporters gate where the pre-game events go on. And I see people are already kind of lining up a little bit to make sure they get the bobblehead today. So. Uh, that has definitely proven to be a popular draw today. We're about an hour till gates open though, so that's also kind of crazy that they're opening up already. All right, here we have what's called a panic cage or a panic cage. I might not be pronouncing that correctly. It's basically a UFC octagon, but with soccer goals. Younger Uncle Mad would have had some fun in this. I need one of these for my house. It's a quick pop into the team store before the match since we got some time to kill. Got the, you know, reduced plastic weights jersey the team's going to be wearing today. I like this one better than last year's, but not enough to spend $100 on it. Eh. So in addition to the blue keeper jersey, we've got a green keeper jersey you can buy this year, this week too. It's not bad. I like this green one. I think I like the blue one better though. I end up getting the blue jersey at some point in time. This is a new one this week. It's a Mitchell and Ness baseball jersey. Not bad, but it's like 115 bucks. So, pass. I don't know if I've seen this one. Like, it's like a white highlighted Johnny Cash scarf. Summer style. The thinner summer style scarf. All right, this right here is like right up my alley. This like, it's like a thin t-shirt style material, but it's like with the hood. Look at a Titans thing just like this. I may need this. So I think we picked the right time to get in line because it's we're about, you know, maybe like 30 people deep. But if you turn around, the line has officially gotten insane. People really want this dadgum Walker Zimmerman bobblehead. All right, 6.03. Gates still haven't opened. A little bit of a delay here. I can see the Walkers and Moomin Bobberheads. They're right there. I did it. I said something, they opened the gates. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Mission accomplished. We did it. This might be the earliest I've ever been in this stadium. Worth it for Walker, though. Or as my wife likes to call him, the handsome guy. Alright, we got the Walker Zimmerman bobblehead. We're doing a quick unboxing of it here. First exclusive look. This might be the most accurate bobblehead I've ever seen. The Titans ones look terrible. They don't look anything like the players must be. That's pretty spot on. He's just as handsome in bobblehead form as he is in real life. Force hammer and everything. Good job, Nashville SC. Kind of missed them, but the LAFC faithful have arrived. Decent showing for a West Coast team. Saw quite a few LAFC people out in the uh, parking tailgate area before the match. There's a puppy on the pitch. We have a puppy on the pitch. He's being adorable. Look at that adorable pup. Lots of Aurora arrive for the warm-ups. See, they're wearing the teal 
birthday plastic kits. Jack Marr looks like 45 years old now. It feels like it's about 30 degrees since we got here. I'm very much regretting the decision to record. There's a really sick set of uh, Adidas National SE joggers in the team store that I thought about buying, but they're like $85. I'm not paying that. All right, so I just remembered I brought the wireless microphone with me. So if you didn't hear me on the earlier stuff, like I drowned it out, apologies. And if you can't hear me now because the microphone's not working, apologies for that too. It's pretty crazy that just a few short months ago, LAFC came here, Gareth Bale made his MLS debut, and he's already retired as an MLS Cup champion since then. Crazy world we live in. You can run Woo! Yeah! Woo! Studio musician and producer, Nashville native and proud Nashville Soccer Club season ticket holder, Derek Well! Ted Uncle is too close to Nashville's teal jerseys. Nil-nil right, still, 33 minutes in. Joe Willis, once again, only thing keeping us alive right now. Some incredible saves so far in this match. <laughs> took off Walker in like the 54th minute for reasons. And sure enough, four minutes later, defense doesn't close anybody down, just lets 99 from LAFC run through the middle and just rip a shot and score. We feel that coming, we just, we were too open in the back all day long. CJ on for Teal. It's be a really good day for him to break his 300-day uh, goalless streak. Go Olympico, honey. Whoa, CJ! Oh! The streak continues. CJ needs all the help he can get right now. You can't call fouls on him. All right, we got a free kick here deep in the LA territory. Josh Bauer just came in, a rare appearance from him. Gray Goose also in. I'd like to see more of him. I think he's been good for us when he's come on, but. Dax got the spot tonight with uh, Sean Davis possibly out injured. Oh, Stella Oh! Probably the last person that should be saying this, but uh, Carlos Vela looks a little uh, thick with multiple C's out there. He's got a little, got a little chalk to him. Oh, 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 oh! oh. 
tempo, brightening up the crowd. Dire circumstances also blocking my vision of the game, but no, no big deal. He's the man. He's here for a reason. Oh, we almost lost tempo. We almost lost tempo there for a second. I think you're not supposed to stay on the seats. I'm pretty sure security should come arrest tempo. Uh oh. Offsides, thank God. Jesus Christ. They did, but it was offsides. Oh, security just told him to get down. Oh, that's not security. Never mind. I was going to say, if we got sad tempo right when a goal got scored, that would be all time. Offsides, luckily offsides. I don't know how. Let's just play on. Restart play. Let's go. One all. I thought we were going to lose this match, so I guess this is kind of a positive result in my eyes. I don't know. Back home after the 1-1 draw between Nashville SC and LAFC. Not going to dwell too much on the match. It kind of went pretty much how I expected. Well, hang on. Oh, it just alerted me he needs to come inside. Literally could have come back inside any point in time, but the second I hit record is when you're like, Turn, I begin. Match went pretty much how I would expected it to go, um, for the most part in terms of the actual performance on the field. I thought LAFC would probably win, so I should probably be a little bit happier with the draw than I am since I didn't expect to get a result, but when I saw that LAFC fielded, you know, kind of a rotated squad, it seemed like they were resting some players for their CONCACAF Champions League match they have coming up midweek. Felt like the game was there for the taking more than I thought it would be. It felt like, you know, especially the first half, we were really on top of the game and creating chances, but it turned out, you know, everything was exactly what we expected. The chances we were creating, the only person who seemed likely to score them was Hani Mukhtar. Switched out. Teal in for CJ Sapong as a striker. He was a little bit more active and involved in the attack, but he still was nowhere near to ever scoring any goals. He never was getting into goal scoring positions, but he players played off him a little bit better than we've played off CJ lately. CJ had a half chance in the second half that a more in form on top of things striker probably could have turned into a goal, but couldn't. But outside of that, Handy Mukhtar had the goal and he had two or three golden opportunities. And he had one where he just dribbled through the entire LAFC defense and just barely put the shot wide. And you kind of were like, at that point in time, you're like, if we don't get a second goal, we kind of know what's going to happen here because the odds of us keeping their potent attack quiet the entire game were very low. So it kind of felt like they were always going to score a goal. And if we didn't get a second goal somewhere in the game, it was going to be either a draw or a loss for us. So it kind of went how we expected frustrating though it was more frustrating than it probably should be because it felt like it was there for the taking at certain points especially in the first half when we were really kind of in control i gotta say it you know it's impressive the fan base lafc had they had a pretty you know high number of fans there you know typically we don't see you know a whole lot of fans from the opposing team unless it's more of a nearby opponent like atlanta cincinnati columbus teams like that so kudos to lafc for you know pretty quickly growing a big fan base. I mean, I was interested, I was talking to my buddies that I was at the game with, you know, what determines for Los Angeles people which team they supported? Like, Galaxy's been around forever. And I know it's, you know, in Carson, which is not really in LA proper, and LAFC is now in downtown Los Angeles. So is it that? Is it that it's, it's a more Los Angeles-based team where people that maybe were for the Galaxy for a long time have decided, you know, they want to be for the team that's actually in LA? Is it just that they have cooler colors? I think the black and gold, you know, obviously I'm a fan of the man in black kit. I think they've got a good color scheme. If any LAFC fans happen to be watching this video, let me know. How do you end up being an LAFC fan as opposed to like a Galaxy fan? Were you a Galaxy fan until AFC came around and you jumped on the LFC side once it formed? I'm interested in that. I, I don't really know the history and why people would 
I support one or the other. So if you're an LA fan, let me know. I'm certainly interested in that. Eating a little leftover Dicey's Pizza Tavern today. Vlog from there coming up later. Stay tuned for that. Fun day. Hey, Jonas, it's always fun to go to the games, even if the results don't go necessarily the way we want them to. And we'll be back there a ton coming up. Like I, I said in the live stream last night, I think we have, if I'm looking at the schedule right, four straight home games coming up. We had tonight against LAFC. Wednesday, we've got a midweek game in the U.S. Open Cup against uh, San Antonio. Not easy match. I believe they're the defending champions of USL, if not USL... I don't know if it was the USL 1 or USL 2 or whatever they're called, but they just won the championship in USL, something Nashville C didn't do in their time there, so you know they're going to be a tough opponent coming up, and we're certainly going to have to rotate the squad some. Zimmerman, interestingly, you know, he came out just before the goal got scored for LAFC. Gary Smith said in the post-game press conference at halftime he was having some groin tightness, tried to play through it, but they quickly decided in the second half that it wasn't worth risking doing any further damage, so they pulled him off pretty early in the second half. Dan Lovitz has to tuck inside as an emergency center back because we just have no depth there. I mean, it's that was another thing. We knew coming into this game, we have no depth at center back, and we have no alternative goal-scoring threats other than Henny Bookstar, and those two things were as present as anything in this match because we have Dan Lovitz having to move into center back, and nobody can score but Henny Bookstar. It was, it was the Nashville SC story in a nutshell in the match, but... Definitely has to see some rotation, some updates for the Wednesday game. You know, potentially Randall Leal coming back in, working his way back into the team for that match. Um, and then next Saturday, an early kickoff, 12.30, we've got Atlanta coming to town. That'll be fun. And I think the next Saturday after that, we have another home game. So a lot of National SC content coming up from Geo's Park. Lots of game day vlogs coming up. Make sure you're subscribed with the bell turned on for notifications. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned, you're going to want to see this Dicey Pizza Tavern video because uh, it's good stuff. I'll see you at Taco Bell.